outside a sleazy motel in Guadalajara, he, um, he met um, Al Chapo, <laughs> over here, <laughs> and one of his bodyguards over here, and uh, talked about a new way to get money by uh, working with the Guzman cartel in the uh, Guzman cartel in Mexico. Well, this paid off because uh, later uh, in that decade, he made his second major direction-changing discovery by showing that uh, there was a receptor for capsaicin, again using a very, very clever technique, uh, using uh, tritiated resin toxin, which was an ultra-potent um, analog of capsaicin. And I remember when Peter came into my office one day, this is unbelievable, really, um, and said that um, he'd been looking at the structure of resin toxin, which was often used as a control in tumor promotion experiments, and he thought that it looked like, uh, this is a 2D structure, by the way. He thought it looked like the 2D structure of capsaicin. I looked at it, it didn't look like anything to me. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So, there you go. He, uh, he had this uh, stuff um, made and uh, showed specific binding. And that led to the isolation of the capsaicin receptor, which is a pain receptor. And he, he and his group have been working on those two areas, PKC and non-loids, ever since. Just uh, remarkable insights. Uh, the capsaicin story got hot um, <laughs> when Peter um, started looking uh, through the phyla to see who had the receptor and who didn't have the receptor. Shows you the way this brain works. Um, he uh, realized that uh, Squirrels and all mammals had a capsaicin receptor, but birds didn't. And um, being a cancer scientist, he immediately thought about bird seed <laughs> and, um, and developed a bird seed, uh, which could be uh, intolerable for squirrels, but uh, completely innocuous for, uh, for people. Uh, not for, people. <laughs> for, for, for birds. And uh, one of his ex-postdocs formed a company and they made the bird seed, and you can buy it every day in any hardware store or bird store uh, anywhere in the country. Uh, this brought in big bucks to the NIH, and um, it was uh, one of the most unusual patents, I'm sure, maybe the most unusual patent ever uh, patented by the NIH. Um, and there's, a cop there's some pictures of his bird seed. He was going to call it Peter's pepper seed. <laughs> Okay, in, in the last two decades, Peter has been collaborating with chemists, trying to um, find uh, ways to apply his discoveries to the relief of pain and cancer. He's uh, moved into other formal ester binding uh, targets, which some of which are relevant for cancer, like RAS-GRP1 and RAS-GRP3, for example. And, um, and again, continue to work with uh, Victor in developing uh, new confirmationally constrained analogs of isoglycerol. I think the last one was maybe paper 31. Here's some ones since then. There must be more, more papers than that. More papers than that. Okay, so it's been an ongoing uh, project. In um, this, and. Now, Amy just gave me this picture, I hadn't seen it before, of the, um, I would say, the big four in the PKC field, which was taken, what was the meeting? It was in Japan, what was the meeting? This would be a meeting uh, honoring Nishizuka. Ah, okay. So Nishizuka, uh, along with Peter, once Peter had discovered the binding to a target, Nishizuka showed that the target was um, PKC. And uh, <clears throat> these are uh, four of the leading investigators in the PKC field taken in 2001. Um, Alexander Newton uh, has um, developed her own um, niche in the PKC field, and I guess two years ago, or, I mean four years ago, she was a site visitor to our lab. She was one of our site visitors. And, um, and Alan Fields, uh, who's uh, worked on um, PKCs in the gut, 
done beautiful work on particularly PKC Alpha, uh, was a guest speaker in our lab a couple years ago as well. So um, these connections are, are terrific. In the last uh, seven years or so, I'd say, again, going through these papers, he's continued to work with chemists in both the Vanilloid area and the uh, PKC area, trying to find um, potent and selective agonists and antagonists in um, <clears throat> that could be used for <coughs> drugs uh, to alleviate pain and, um, and cancer development. So it's been an amazing career, I would say. It's one that uh, probably could only have been done at NIH. I don't know what you guys think about it, but this is a really, I think, a, a, an NIH-specific kind of approach to, um, to science, in which you can identify important problems and pursue those problems without the concern of getting funding to pursue those problems and carry them through to an amazing um, insight into, into what those uh, problems uh, could reveal and also what they may do for improving public health. So just a few more slides. There have been um, at least three journal covers that have evolved from Peter's work. Uh, this one shows the uh, C1B domain of PKC Delta as it's uh, incorporated into lipids. This one was, uh, I think this was the Gadisil-Pusterolactone um, discovery and uh, some of the bi biology and biochemistry of that. And this one was biostatin, another area that, that Peter pioneered, this story of bio biostatin, and, um, and continues to work on it uh, to this day. Now there's one other aspect to Peter's career that can't go unnoticed, and that is his um, contribution to inspiring the death to pursue careers in science. It's been a remarkable uh, almost 20 years in which Peter has um, trained very bright deaf students, mostly from Gallaudet, who have um, an interest in science and want to either pursue careers in science or get additional training in science. It's been uh, a wonderful thing to see and uh, to watch these students um, grow and uh, participate. I think all of us who in LCBG who have seen this happen uh, are just inspired by it as well. And um, Peter has gotten a good deal of recognition, well-deserved recognition for this. So in 2007, he received the National Public Service Award for his work with uh, deaf students. This was given by the American Society of Public Administration. Um, he, uh, went, he was received the Ruth Kirstein uh, Diversity and Science Award from the American Society of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, a very high honor, um, again. And I wanted to read what he said about his work, uh, which is in the blue uh, box. It says, the disabled are the minority that includes all of us, regardless of our race or ethnic group, but ironically, it is a group that defines no one because each of us, regardless of label, brings a mixture of strengths and weaknesses. It is only the team of individuals that may be strong everywhere. That's a pretty inspiring quote. Um, again, there have been additional awards in 2015, the NIH uh, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Award. Uh, we saw the award that uh, Doug gave him just very recently, and uh, recently Gal Gadet honored Peter with uh, one of their awards. So Peter, um, at a personal level, it's just been, um, he's been the dream collaborator, and um, I've always been in awe of your brilliance um, and, um, and your insight. Anyone who sits in our journal club understands uh, the insight that Peter brings to science. Um, and um, and your, um, just your great citizenship. Uh, you know, as a lab chief, um, you often have to deal with a lot of crap. And, um, but it's never come from Peter. Ever. And uh, so, 
Um, thank you so much for uh, being part of the lab, being part of my life, and uh, what more to say, you did a great job. So now we're going to uh, call on um, some of the leadership uh, to say a few words and some of the alumni 